Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Welcome to Freedom News. Today's headlines. At least 160 dead and 300 wounded after attacks by armed gangs in Nigeria. Israel Gaza war live. Israeli forces bombard Khan Yunis as Gaza officials say nearly 200 killed in 24 hours. Nipper earthquake survivors dying in tents as temperatures plunge. Russia Ukraine war live. Ukraine launches airstrikes on Russia's Belgorod and Bransk regions. Pope says Roman Catholic priests can bless same-sex couples. In a BBC featured article on December 18, Pope Francis has allowed priests to bless same-sex couples, a significant advance for LGBT people in the Roman Catholic Church. The leader of the Roman Catholic Church said priests should be permitted to bless same-sex and irregular couples under certain circumstances. But the Vatican said blessings should not be part of regular church rituals or related to civic unions or weddings. It added that it continues to view marriage as between a man and a woman. Pope Francis approved a document issued by the Vatican announcing the change in Monday. The Vatican said it should be a sign that God welcomes all. But the document says priests must decide on a case-by-case -case basis. The BBC document concluded saying the declaration represents a softening of tone from the Catholic Church. In 2021, the Pope said priests should not bless him says marriage because God cannot bless sin. However, in October 2023, Pope Francis has suggested in October that he was open to having the church bless same sex couples. The General Dwight D. Eisenhower, then the Supreme Commander of the Allied Expeditionary Force in Europe, together with Generals Patton and Bradley, arrived to inspect the camp for themselves. After his visit, Eisenhower cabled. The things I saw beggared description. The visual evidence and the verbal testimony of starvation, cruelty, and bestiality were so overpowering as to leave me a bit sick. I made the visit deliberately in order to be in a position to give first-hand evidence of these things, if ever, in the future. There develops a tendency to charge these allegations merely to propaganda. In the darkest chapter of human history, a dreadful slaughter unfolded during World War II, the Holocaust. Blood flowed like streams through the streets, painting a gluesome scene impossible to perfectly describe. Led by Adolf Hitler, the Nazis orchestrated the systematic persecution and murder of 6 million Jews, along with millions of other innocent lives, fell victim to the horrific genocide. The roots of this tragedy lie in the Nazis' deep-seated anti-Semitic beliefs and extreme nationalism. Jews were falsely blamed for societal problems, becoming the primary target of a racist ideology that deemed them inferior. Discriminatory laws and relentless persecution paved the way for the unimaginable. The systematic genocide of 6 million Jewish lives. Behind such a devastating movement was a distorted sense of false freedom a toxic ideology that blinded individuals to the all-encompassing love of God. The Holocaust stands as a stark reminder of the consequences of forfeiting the laws of God as instructed in the scriptures. Man has to acknowledge the supremacy of God in order to respect human freedom to life and to cherish the inherent value of every human life.
Humanity seems to be on a quest for something. Humans, they say, is incurably religious. Even the atheist is on a quest. The Muslim is on a quest. The Gnostic is equally on a quest for something as well as the Christian. One underlying purpose is freedom. This as well led to the New Age movement which emerged in the 20th century with a diverse spiritual and metaphysical belief system. It is the idea of a spiritual awakening, a shift from consciousness and awareness. It portrays a heightened sense of inner peace, self-discovery, and a connection to spiritual existence. It offers a transformative journey towards a more expansive and enlightened state of being. Why thousands have embraced this movement for its perceived beauty? There appears to be a contradiction in the path to enlightenment and peace of mind. This lies in the fact that humans cannot create peace, nor can they create enlightenment. It doesn't lie within the power of self. If self could offer these things, then there would be no quest for something. You cannot give what you don't have. That means that we must rely on a being that does not have our constraints to have true peace of mind and enlightenment. Universal consciousness is a big word that doesn't mean much. As the universe doesn't exist by itself, it has a designer. History tells us about a Messiah called Jesus Christ. He alone is the key to what men are desperately looking for. Obedience to God's method alone can generate complete peace and enlightenment. It taught to surrender to Christ's sacrifice on the cross as penalty for sin can bring true peace and freedom from self. And this alone can bring true enlightenment. Human enlightenment is limited. We can't know more than is revealed. Deviating from established rules and creating personal rules away from that of the Creator signifies selfishness, potentially fueling greed and distortion on a global scale, leading to chaos and disorder. Total obedience to God's commandments alone can bring us peace and enlightenment. Seek after such freedom. What we have just heard reveal the stark reality. That is, there are thousands of prisons and detention facilities worldwide. These facilities vary greatly in terms of size, capacity, and purpose. Some are small local jails, while others are large penitentiaries or maximum security prisons. These prisons house convicts, and many are thankful to have never been in one or even pity those who are confined to these places. Yet, the prison of sin, fears, and addictions are centered in our minds. We can walk about as free men, yet we are slaves to our sins or destructive habits and addictions. Why this state may not care as long as we are not convicted of any crime? God's standards are way higher, and He is interested in our freedom from such things that enslave us mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thus, we must embrace true freedom. God loves us too much to leave us where He meets us in all forms of slavery of mind and body, particularly a place of enslavement caused by sin and addictions. In and through only one life can true freedom be found because of the hope held out to humanity by sinless life, sacrificial death, and glorious resurrection. While history is riddled with stories of men and women who sought freedom or to give others freedom, they have been limited in their scope. Jesus is on record to have said, I am the bread of life, the living water and the light of life. As each of these things are crucial to life, so is the freedom he offers us crucial to our otherwise spiritual hunger, thirst and darkness. The biblical and historical Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And this word sums up the greatest gift to lost humankind. He was born in an obscure village, a child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another obscure village where he worked in a carpenter's shop until he was 30. 
Then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never had a family or owned a home. He never set foot inside a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from the place he was born. He never wrote a book or had an office. He did none of the things that usually accompany greatness. While he was still a young man, the tide of popular opinion turned against him. His friends decided him. He was turned over to his enemies. He went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, his executioners gambled for the only piece of property he had, his coat. When he was dead, he was taken down and laid in a borrowed grave. Nineteen centuries have come and gone, and today he is still the central figure for much of the human race. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, and all the parliaments that ever sat, and all the kings that ever reigned, put together, have not affected the life of man upon this earth as powerfully as this one solitary life. It has been rightly observed of the famous verse, John 3, 16. For God, the greatest giver, so loved the greatest motive, the world, the greatest number, that he gave the greatest act, his only begotten son, the greatest gift, that whosoever, the greatest invitation, believes in him, the greatest opportunity, should not perish, the greatest deliverance, but have everlasting life, the greatest joy. Choose today and choose the highest ideals of freedom ever known. Here I stand. I can do no other. God help me. And thank you. We finally come to an end of Freedom Magazine, and I hope you've been blessed by this series of Freedom Magazine. Subscribe to our channel and continue to tune in. We have more exciting features and programs coming for you. We hope you tune in and uh, support us in any way you can. Thank you. God bless you, and bye-bye. Happy New Year.